Hi everyone, I'm Dr. John Diard, and I want to talk about a forgotten mineral called lithium. You know, we always think of lithium as the drug that folks use for bipolar disorders, but we don't remember that lithium was something that was actually quite famous in the 1800s. There was lithium spas around the country, particularly a famous one outside of Atlanta where presidents would go, Mark Twain would go, the Vanderbilts would go, and they would soak and drink in this, these lithium springs. Um, it was so popular back in the 1800s that uh, 7-Up, the, the up in 7-Up was actually from lithium. I mean, who knew that, right? Uh, the original name of the 7-Up soda was called 7-Up Lithiated Lemon Soda. And then, in, and because they put lithium literally into the Seven Up, and the lithium helps support mood and longevity and health and cognitive function, and those are backed by pretty amazing studies. Um, so the the uh, in 1936 they actually finally changed the name to just Seven Up, and at some point they they took the lithium out and just put more sugar in it, and and people got happy that way. The lithium that's used in um, in medicine, Western medicine for bipolar is something called lithium citrate, which is a, uh, a, an aggressive form of lithium and at higher doses can be a little bit on the toxic side. But the, the doses that they use um, for, you know, uh, in a supplement form, which have been proven to be safe and proven to be effective at much, much lower dosages is lithium orotate. And there's a ton of studies on lithium orotate for mood stability, longevity, cognitive function, even as low as 300, 250 uh, to 300 micrograms, which is a really, really tiny dose. Like in our essential minerals, which I'm a big fan of taking all the minerals that are highly absorbable, two capsules gives you 250 um, micrograms, which is a clinical therapeutic effective dose of lithium, just to make sure you have some baseline support. You know, studies show that when, that when they look at water supplies around the world that have more lithium in them than other water supplies that don't have as much lithium in it, in it people, uh, areas where there's more lithium in the water, there is a significant reduction in suicide rates, support, obviously they're for supporting healthier mood. Many psychiatrists are lobbying the government to actually put lithium in the water, like they put fluoride in the water, now they wanna put lithium in the water because it's so powerful for the mood. And maybe not a bad idea because you know, you know, our emotional health index is not great in America for many, many reasons, but it's something to, to think about and something that's being lobbied you know, right now. Studies show that lithium can actually support, I'm talking low dose supplemental lithium, 200 to 300 micrograms, which is not a lot, can increase heart health, stabilize blood sugar, increase energy, increase the transport of certain vitamins. Um, it should be said that also uh, lithium works really well with other minerals and they sort of have cofactors that help them become more functional. So you really want to take your, your, your uh, lithium with other minerals if possible. It interestingly increases the concentration of the gray matter, the cortex of the brain. It increases the size of your amygdala and hippocampus, which are the emotional centers of your brain. I need to repeat that. Lithium increases the size of your amygdala and your hippocampus. And we have many studies that show that certain things can shrink the brain, um, like B12 and things like that. Well, this can actually increase the size of the brain. It increases neural stem cells, which are regenerative cells in your brain and nervous system, which are pretty phenomenal. And it increases neurotransmitters like dopamine, GABA, uh, serotonin, and others. So it's pretty well studied. In Japan, they did a study for, with all-cause all cause mortality, and they found they, put, they, they, they um, measured 18 different neighborhoods, over 1.2 million people, and they found that, that the groups that had most lithium in their water had a significant reduction in all-cause mortality. In fact, it was so powerful in animal studies that the lifespan was increased by 46% in animals who drank more highly lithiated water. And like I said, if all you need is about 250 to 300 micrograms to make it work. And how lithium works, one of the ways it works is it inhibits a, an enzyme, a toxic damaging enzyme in your body called glycogen synthase kinase, which is uh, an enzyme called uh, GSK3, which is, you might remember that one, is the GSK3 is the enzyme that does all this damage. And without lithium in your water, that, that nothing lithium inhibits the damaging effect of that enzyme. That's how it works. Um, 
So it's something, and it's well, well studied, and that's how it supports mood and energy and vitality and cognitive function and heart and blood sugar, all the things that I mentioned. Um, but like I said, lithium depends on other minerals. So it's important to make sure you're taking with other minerals when you're taking it. And studies show that about two thirds of the world's population are deficient in minerals. A study here in America showed that 50 to 75% of Americans are deficient in other in minerals, uh, at least one or other mineral. So minerals are a problem. You know, the, I've written articles about mineral deficiencies and you know, the vitamins, the oranges don't have a lack of vitamin C, but the soil is deficient in minerals. That's for sure. And we have to recognize that. And organic soils um, are coming back in terms of their uh, their mineral content, but um, but you know uh, conventional farmers will put minerals back into the soil, usually in forms that maybe not that absorbable or or, or useful for us, or at too high or too low levels. It's sort of like a, a, a you know crapshoot. We don't they don't really know how to make it just right because it's not a natural thing that's happening. And in organic farms, we don't put that in there, so it's so it's something that you, well, oftentimes we still have a lack of minerals even in organic foods. But lithium is high in certain foods like cereals, grains, potatoes, cabbage. Mineral waters are generally higher. Nutmeg, coriander, uh, cumin are high in lithium. But it all depends on the soil and the geography. Some areas, remember back in the day in 1920s, they put the iodine in the salt because certain parts of the world there were goiter belts. Goiter belts were Folks just did, there just was not any iodine in the soil. So if you grew your vegetables in that soil, you didn't get the iodine. And therefore a whole host of people usually, and that was back in like in Michigan and areas like that, that had big goiters. Um, and then they put iodine in the salt and it, it, it all disappeared. It was quite phenomenal kind of a thing. Black tea has uh, uh, lithium, green tea has lithium, but red teas, rubos, tea has the most lithium, so have those teas. So it's a good idea to have these foods in mind and you're gonna get a good chunk of lithium from the foods that you eat. It's trace levels based on the soil and the crops. You don't really know how much is in there. So I'm a big fan of taking a, a good mineral supplement and that's the, the effective range of, of uh, lithium that's, that's effective for all these things that have been shown in studies and studies and studies after studies, but also the history of you know, drinking lithium water and bathing in lithium springs and things like that is about 250 micrograms to about 1,000 micrograms. Most of that you probably get from your food, but to make sure you're getting the baseline, I'm a big fan of taking the 250 milligrams per day. And our essential minerals has all the minerals in one of the most highly absorbable form, they're from Albion, which is the company that actually publishes this absorption rates for all the minerals, and they're the highest in any other company. And all the high-end mineral products use this, this, this kind of chelated mineral for absorption, best absorption. And two of the essential minerals that I use every day um, it gives you about 250 uh, micrograms. I would suggest for about a month or so, take four of those per day to boost all your mineral levels and then once you're, and I, when I first started doing it, I felt significantly better. And then um, on many, just more energy, more vital. And it was, it was really clear that I was lagging in some minerals. And then once you get to that level, you can dial it down to about two a day. And then you get that baseline lithium support, as well as the other minerals that, um, that, that should be available to us on a regular basis. And remember, there is no calcium tree or magnesium tree. The minerals come out of the ground in a cascade of, of minerals coming in together. And that's what I like about this product. They're highly absorbable. You get all the basic minerals in one time and you don't need to clobber yourself by taking a ton of them. But because of the deficiencies in our soil and in the mineral deficiencies around the world, it's a great idea to make sure you support that. But lithium is the topic of today's article. I cite all the science in the article at lifespot.com. Go check that out and uh, see the article, read the science. It's quite amazing that this mineral lithium has been overlooked for so long and how critically important it is for our mental health, our emotional health, our cognitive health, and maybe above all, our longevity. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Deard. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.